Uh, so it's, it's called uh, Green Religion. All right. Is that of a new concept? Is it... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can say that. Okay. Um, so basically the idea is the age of peace has come. And the easiest way for us to get into the new paradise timeline is to have forgiveness, compassion, and unconditional love for all beings. Who's going to fight that? And if you, who's going to fight that? But if you do, oh, okay. you're not going to win. So I, I, do, I do believe the prophetic scriptures that Jesus said, you know, when the angels said that God says that his peace, his kingdom, his peace will be of no end. And I believe the more war there is, the more peace will be much more relevant to what the reality is. Because people don't, they don't want war. Yeah, it's, things are getting more peaceful all the time. Statistically, I, it's just that the news. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here. that are important to us all. 
uh, that we share in common. And I'm not going to try to name those, we'll, we'll maybe name those for one another. So this is an invitation to, to dialogue. Um, with some preliminaries, as I share with you these habits of the heart that I have learned, we have learned, um, from a person called Parker Palmer. Um, and I, I hope they resonate with you as a bit of a touchstone for this evening and for being in conversation in public space with any group of people. Palmer believes that we have lost uh, our capacity for being in respectful public dialogue. And when we come into public spaces, he believes that we quickly degenerate into argument, debate, and then we go our separate ways without knowing how to manage our differences. So I've been inspired by his desire to find courage and take courage to be together in the midst of our differences and find a way forward in human community. Hi, welcome. Have a seat. My name is Graham. I happen to work over at St. George's Anglican Church. Um, but that's all I need to say about, about that. I'm just very grateful that we're able to gather in this way. As a first step, um, I want to acknowledge, as is becoming customary in many places these days, and it feels like an important thing to do, the land that we're on is the land of the Sargon Ojibwe First Nation. There's been a bit of a comedy around that lately about the acknowledgement of the land, which is actually very appropriate because it calls uh, us into action rather than simple tipping of our hats to, to the fact that we are on indigenous land here. And so I would name the, the, the teachings of the Saudi Ojibwe as also a bit of a touchstone for our conversation. Love, wisdom, respect, bravery, honesty, humility, and truth. I can't find any reason to argue with any of those <laughs> teachings. And maybe not of this world. But it's important to own that we, we're here in this uh, place that has been sacred to the people who have lived here for many thousands of years. Could I invite you into the um, habits of the heart just to introduce these as touchstones for our conversation? It's on the side of the, on the page that says an interface dialogue. Parker Palmer said, habits of the heart are deeply ingrained ways of seeing, being, and responding to life that involve our minds, our emotions, our self-images, our concepts of meaning and purpose in life. And there are five that he articulates, which taken together, he says, are critical to healthy communities. I'm wondering if one person might read each of these. One, one, five people, one at a time, maybe. <laughs> I have trouble with reading this language. <laughs> so if somebody would read the first one and then somebody else the second one, uh, if you feel comfortable doing that. Understanding that we're all in this We humans are a strongly interconnected species, entwined with one another in all forms of life. A global and economic and ecological crisis has revealed the truth. We must embrace the simple fact that we are dependent on and accountable to one another. At the same time, we must save this notion of interdependence from idealistic extremes that make it an impossible dream. What leads to a second key, which leads to a second key habit of the heart. Appreciation of the value of otherness. We are all in this together. And we spend our lives in groups so we can be limited by us, them, 
and gave. But this does not have to mean us versus them. Instead, it can remind us of the ancient tradition of hospitality to the stranger and put it into 21st century terms. The stranger has much to teach us if we are open to the creative possibilities inherent in our differences. Which leads us to the third place of art. Ability to hold tension and life giving ways. Life is full of contradictions. The gap between our aspirations and our behavior, but the obligations and insights we cannot abide because they run the counter to our own conditions. If we fail to hold these contradictions creatively, they will shut us down and isolate us. But when we allow the tension to expand our hearts, they can open up new understandings of ourselves and of the world. We are in perfect means and in perfect world. The genius of the human heart lies in its capacity to use these tensions to generate insight, energy, and new life. Making the most of these gifts requires a fourth to have heart. A sense of personal voice and agency. Insight and energy give rise to new life as we speak and act. Expressing our version of the truth while checking it and correcting it against the truths of others. But many of us lack confidence in our own voices and in our power to make a difference. We grow up learning to be members of their audience rather than actors in the drama. Yet it remains possible for us to find our voices, learn how to use them, and know the satisfaction that comes from contributing to positive change. If we have the support of the community, Capacity to create community. Without a community, it is nearly impossible to find our voice. It takes a village. Without community, it is nearly impossible to exercise the power of one in a manner that multiplies. In a mass society like ours, community rarely becomes ready made. But creating community in the places where we live and work does not mean abandoning other parts of our lives. The steady companionship of two or three kindred spirits can kindle the courage we need to speak and act as citizens and partners in the human enterprise. So I talk as, as, uh, as a ground on which we might, a common ground on which we might stand. Um, there isn't too much controversial in there um, with which people of goodwill cannot agree about the, the way of our life uh, as human beings on this planet and some of our needs. Um, rather than discuss those, I just want to let that off of that and invite that as, as a bit of a, a basis for philosophical basis, if you like, for our conversation. Now, I've found poetry uh, to be a good way into listening to our own hearts. Um, I'm hoping that tonight we will have conversation first in pairs, which is probably the most comfortable way to be in, in dialogue. And I want you to be thinking, if you would, about um, Finding somebody in a minute, we're all sitting next to somebody we know fairly well, or well, many of us are. Finding somebody in a minute that you don't know um, about with whom you might want to have a conversation. That's easy. Okay. Um, and the, the elements of that conversation will be yours to make. I've offered some suggestions. Um, so after reading this poem together, <coughs> beginning to listen to our own heart, heart response. I'm going to invite us into conversation with one another where an important element is, is listening to our own hearts and listening to our own thoughts and feelings. That is just an essential part of our capacity to be in dialogue with, with one another as well as listening to the other listening to our responses. So without more ado about that, uh, this is a poem of, of Wendell Berry. It's 
an excerpt from a poem of his. I was looking for something that might um, stir some response in, in us. Um, and after having it read a couple of times, and I would invite one person to read it and then maybe a pause and then invite one other person in a different voice to read this, this poem of Wendell Berry. Then I will ask that we might respond just very simply to what it is that stirs in us as we read these words, in a word or a phrase, before then we move into dialogue with one another. Who would like to read the first time to read? I realize I'm being very presumptuous here mm -hmm. um, and, and offering this as a structure. I hope you'll trust me. Uh, and then tell me afterwards what you didn't like. Would <laughs> <laughs> somebody like to read? Jane. We long to be a place by knowledge of the others who are in the neighbor's name. The old man, sick and poor, who comes like a heron to fish in the creek. And the fish in the creek. And the heron who man-like fishes for the fish in the creek. And the birds who sing in the tree in the silence of the fisherman and the hare, and the trees that keep the land they stand upon, as we too must keep it, or die. Speak to your fellow humans as your place has taught you to speak, as it has spoken to you. Speak its dialect as your old compatriots spoke it before they had heard a radio. Speak publicly what cannot be taught or learned in public. Listen privately, silently, to the voices that rise up from the pages of books and from your own heart. Be still and listen to the voices that belong to the stream banks and the trees and the open fields. There are songs and sayings that belong to this place by which it speaks for itself and no other. Would somebody be willing to read in a different voice? So I thought 
of trees when I when we read this. Sometimes we walk downtown uh, first thing in the morning, and uh, we, we live near the Potawatomi River, and there's always people fishing early in the morning when we go, and that's what it made me think of. And I thought, you know, my that's one of the things that makes a sense of place here for me. It's just the fishermen. Mm-hmm. So it was the fishermen that constructed me. It's interesting to speak to your fellow humans as your place. I, I, I have students at uh, home from Georgia College. And I took one out for supper. He spent the whole time playing with his phone. <laughs> and I'm like, I went out for some companionship, for a lack of a better word. And when, when we got done, I'm like, I might as well sat there alone. And, and this is what this generation seems to be all about. They wake up and, oh, got this device in their hand and they're looking at it like it's God. And you ask them a question and they're, what, what did, you, did you talk to me? And I'm like, is this the way it's going to be? You know, they, they don't sit and talk to each other. They, they play games and all this. And, oh, didn't we have a great time? I'm thinking, you didn't say one word to each other. And I'm like, you might as well be living in a cave all by yourself with this man-made phone that you can play games and stuff and interact with that. You're not interacting with other people. You're not, gee, it's a nasty night. It's not a nice night. Have some, some interaction in that. And I went home and I was really upset. I, you know, it wasn't an expensive meal, but I'm thinking, you know, th- this is kind of like back to the basics, you know. This is where we should be at. Yeah. I find this line, speak publicly, but not be taught or learned in public, really interesting. I don't even know what to make of it. I've read it about five times, but I'm still not. That's the one that struck me, too. Like, why do it if it's not going to teach anything? <laughs> well, I, I, I think what it's trying to say is, you know, speak your truth because what you hear from other sources maybe is not always the way it is or it could be or should be. Speaking stuff isn't being spoken properly maybe, addressing things that are hard to address, but I don't know, every time I think I'm right or about uh, each of our experiences. I think every one of us, you know, people all tonight brings their own experiences, brings their own backgrounds into this. So that, that particular part spoke to me well as well, especially the first part that talks about, you know, speak to your fellow human beings, and it that talk to speak, as it has spoken to you. Each of us, the concept of place is very different. For you, it might be the river in the morning, for me, it's my own time, where I grew up. Who knows tomorrow might change? Uh, so I think this this part, to me, it talks about we all come from different places, and we all bring our learnings and all the good that those places has, you know, they've given us. It's important to share with each other uh, uh, what we bring to the table. That's that's what I what I do. One is the issue of otherness. Young people 
we'll communicate that way now. We didn't learn, many of us are older, we didn't learn to communicate that way. But many people do communicate that way through phones, and they, they connect that way. But if you're taking somebody out to dinner, that, that's a second issue. That doesn't change. That just rude to not pay attention to the person who's taking you out to dinner. So I don't think that's an issue of otherness. I think that's an issue of just plain old rudeness, which in my mind, you have every right to say, hey, could you put the phone away while we're eating? So before we go down the rabbit hole, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to invite maybe a couple more responses to the poem and to what it speaks to your heart. Um, which is one of the challenges of being in public space together um, is to speak from him. I like, I like the, the parallel to the thoughts that were drawn out of the first standard in this poem that connects people with animals, with, with inanimate things, and with fish, and so that one of these was um, the heron who man fishes for the fish in the creek. So that, that is, is an interesting sort of melding of, of uh, viewpoints, if you like, but these viewpoints are the viewpoints of the heron and the fish, and I just, I found that was an interesting uh, few words. Um, I was noticing, like to me, what you were saying kind of did bring it back to the poem and then um, the line of speak to your fellow humans as your place as talking to speak as it is spoken to you, okay? So, um, I know for myself, if I get like trapped in the world of like technology, that's often a seeking, that's often a desire for connection, that's often a desire for some kind of spark, for some kind of uh, meaning, for some kind of pitch, like death, really. Um, it's a funny place to look for it, uh, but if that's where we're, if, uh, if that's where how our place, as sad as it might be, has taught us to speak or how that was how it was spoken to us as what's learned. Um, yeah, so let's just come up in here like that. Our phones are probably what brought most of us to this room though. <laughs> so our phones are probably what brought most of us to this room. The event and us being able to see it on our social media or the phones or whatever. So you know it's it's got its it's good as well as it's so, so I thank you for the last two comments and I apologize for maybe being a little heavy-handed there today okay. in response to try to keep us on focus uh, and for the fact that I probably didn't give sufficient orientation at the beginning to the intention of responding to our, to our inner response to this and in the next conversation to that. Um, the reason we're trying to manage the process is because the rabbit hole I'm worried about going down is, is a side a side track, a side bar. Um, so forgive me if I came out a little strong. Um, I'm going to invite now, because you've already heard enough from me, um, that we mix it up a little bit. And do find somebody to sit with if you're comfortable with that. Um, this is all invitational. It's not share or die. Um, <laughs> but it, it's good to begin in a conversation with one other person. Um, because for most of us, that's a comfortable place to be. Um, some discomfort in meeting with somebody who's brand new to us. But, but I think that's why we responded to the invitation to be here today. Um, because we know it's about our differences. And so I want to invite you, without too much hubbub, you can imagine, find somebody you want to sit with in a conversation. Oh, hey. I just I want to talk to you. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> oh, hey.
So, uh, so what is what is this? You gotta tell me about this. this. It's a 360 camera. Okay. So uh, I'll upload it to YouTube. Okay. And then people will be able to see uh, basically everything that happens. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you got your own channel or something? Or? Yeah. Yeah. I have my own channel. It's called Lurks. Uh, Lurks. Which, How do you spell that? L I R C S. And what does that stand for? Uh, liberated robot civilization scenes. Nice. What's the concept behind it? Can you? So, well, the idea is. Um, uh, so, <laughs> I, I think. I'm curious. I, I, I think yeah. I will update it to. Um, well, it, it's just it's 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 hard to kind of uh, fully get into. I, I think I'll, I'll rename it Green Religion. Okay. Um, because that's kind of the business. Oh. Or, or mercy, compassion, and unconditional love for all beings. Yeah. Uh, just as a, a lot of yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so one one of the aspects of kind of the new paradise that's been like so so in in the seventies and eighties they did future life progressions on yeah. hundreds of people, okay. and they found that about thirty uh, percent of them saw the new paradise. Okay. And in the new paradise, people, uh, like when they walk out of their home, there's uh, the trees and the berries, and it's just like Eden. Okay. Um, but they have uh, close communities, okay. and uh, they generally wear kind of simple clothing. Okay. Um, but they, they still also have technology. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and also, they, they, um, they're in contact with the galactic civilization. Okay. Yeah. So are you, are you, is this a reference, like a reference to afterlife, or is this a reference to our way of life right now? So <laughs> it's the, it's, it's mostly to do with Earth. Okay. Uh, so, so for instance, okay. uh, the, in, in terms of afterlife, that's, that's kind of a separate thing. Okay. Um, because, uh, well, Michael Newton did a lot of research, yeah. uh, and, 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 and Dolores Cannon, yeah. on, on, in, in between lives. Okay. And um, so, so Michael Newton dedicated his whole whole career uh, to regressing people to the time in between their past lives, yep. so that to see what the spirit world was like. Okay. And he yeah. basically, like, we all go through the same stages, and when we're in the spirit world, we're all balls of light, okay. which is um, kind of the the form of God, because uh, when Dolores Cannon, for instance, regressed people. To the time that their soul was born, mm -hmm. then they saw themselves being born from God. Okay. And uh, God appeared as kind of like a, a star. Okay. Uh, but instead of the like the like like those like there were flames and everything, but instead of being like painful or anything, it was actually the feeling of mercy and compassion and unconditional love. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 And so. Uh, 
and, and it, it's interesting that, that it, it's all spheres because if you look in the sky, there's all the stars, and they're also spheres. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. They're also the yeah, spot. yeah. <laughs> those are those are good uh, analogies. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how how Lurks fits into all of that is um, when you have a, a fairly small community, but you want to maintain technology. Um, generally, you need at least a hundred thousand people living in a fairly dense area to motivate them to have industrial production. Okay. But if you have, say, a community of robots, then they are motivated to uh, maintain technology because they need it for spare parts and to create new bodies. Okay. And um, according to all the research, we can also incarnate into robot bodies. Okay. Uh, as well as human bodies. And okay. So that's kind of what I'm interested in. Yeah. And then we can. Uh, you gotta understand. A lot yeah. of this is new to me, so I'm, oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> learning, and I'm, I'm equally, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. excuse my dazed, you know, expression. <laughs> it's uh, me trying to understand and appreciate where you're coming from. Oh sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So so yeah. So so that's what you do. Is, yeah. Is, uh, work towards that or you talk Sustainable about Sustainable communities. Yeah, we, we have 64 acres in the Rand Eldersley. Okay. And we're um, in the process of making a, a cooperative community there. Okay. And then you could get uh, like a hectare or 12,000 uh, to start and then uh, you know... So when you when you talk about we... So, so I, I'm, I, I'm working... Santo... Um, he, he lives on the property now, and uh, it's called Tamarack Community. And then we're also working with a Glassworks Cooperative, which is in town. Okay. And so the idea is to make kind of a model community that we can then kind of cookie cutter so that many people can live in this new paradise way. Gotcha. And you guys are out in there and uh, out there. Uh, so I, I live in Owen Sound. Okay. I, and I have... I have kind of a new Eden in my backyard. <laughs> gotcha, okay. Yeah. Okay. And what does this look like? Uh, the, your backyard? My <laughs> backyard. So, so when it, it's just, uh, there's, there's lots of different kinds of berries and shrubs and perennials, and it's all very low maintenance. And uh, so, so, so almost any time of year we go outside, we can have food. Oh, wow, that's, that's good. Yeah. E- even right now, there's, there's food there. I, I just have to get a shovel, and then there's the sunflower potatoes. Oh, and so nice. I can eat the sunflower potatoes. Wow, really nice. Wow, that's cool, man. I, mean, I, I wish I had half the, you know, the uh, the gardening acumen and, you know. I, lots of practice. Lots of practice. <laughs> yeah. I, can, I can imagine. So that's nice. So you live in Owen Sound? Uh, did yeah. You, did you work in Owen Sound as well? Yeah, I, I have uh, also an online uh, IT business, Libra IT. Gotcha. And, and help, what does your business do? I, I help businesses uh, and uh, people at home with uh, their computer issues as well as they provide online services. Uh, so, you know. Very cool. Wow. Well, that's impressive. I've been wanting to meet you for some time. We just haven't had the time to connect, right? And then uh, it's just been so busy on our end as well. Uh, and I appreciate you engaging with the uh, mosque and engaging with us. What's your name? My name is Waleed. Waleed. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And have you been at Jammu? Uh, when I was there? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, you have? Yeah, I've oh, seen okay. you a, a bunch of times. Yeah. Oh, you have? Okay. Yeah, it's usually because uh, uh, Juma. Juma. Uh, Friday prayers are, are, uh, Juma. Oh, okay. yeah, are, okay. are, a, bit, are a bit rushed. Yeah. Because we're all coming in from our lunches, right? Oh, right, right. Um, and oftentimes I have meetings and whatnot, so I just usually come in, pray, and head straight out. Oh, as much as I want to sit okay. and talk and, you know, engage with my friends and uh, yeah. community members, right? Yeah, so you've been attending and then uh, you've been uh, participating at like yeah. that? And... Yeah, I know Aviz. Uh, it, it's Aviz, right? Aviz? Uh, is, is that the, the mom that was yes, there? Yes, yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So so he he told me he goes there several times a day? To the mosque? To the mosque? Yeah, that's right. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, because he, he told me to come by some other time that he was there at the mosque. Just, yeah. I don't know what the schedule is. Yeah. His, yeah. Um, so he is there technically five times a day. Because oh, okay. we have five prayers uh, in a day, right? Uh-huh. Uh, so, so, and because he's the imam, he leads the prayers, right? So um, I can I can forward you a, a prayer time. In, okay. Right? And, and uh, it's a safe bet that any time a prayer is going on, the mosque is open and he's there. Right? Okay, okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's that way you can it. All right. Uh, so I'll, I'll try that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Sounds yeah. great. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I like your attire as well. I've seen it at the, the, the yeah. mosque, and I was like, you know what? 
it looks very comfortable and you know uh, it is. I like the colors and whatnot too. It's very yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. They found that in the new Paradise timeline, a lot of people wear robes. And, yeah. And tunics. Yeah. And like I, for for some reason, and, and forgive my ignorance, um, I took I seen a lot of monks uh, uh, dressed like this. Oh, as well. oh yes. Yeah. It, it, it's because. Um, well, I, I mostly have a Buddhist lineage. Okay. So, um, in particular, the, the, this this particular robe, I uh, I was a monk in Thailand uh, for a month, and uh, well, in Thailand, where you? It, it was in, in this uh, small town of Phong. It, it's it's uh, an hour north of Chiang Mai. Gotcha. Uh -huh. I've been to Phuket. I've been to okay. uh, Bangkok as well, but not town of Chiang Mai. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it's nice there, but, but we have a lot more nature here. <laughs> it, was, it was very crowded for me. Like I was like, I want to go to a park, and they're like, uh, you can go to the cemetery. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's, of, uh, that's true. That's actually true. Yeah. yeah. The same as where I come from. I come from Pakistan. That's where my uh, Pakistani by background. And uh, the city I grew up in, a city of 20 million. Wow, 20 million, think of that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's huge. Just, it's cramped, it's cramped. Yeah, uh, I bet. Um, they haven't focused a lot on uh, urban planning and, and green spaces and whatnot. Oh, okay. Uh, and now they're they're moving towards it now uh, because you can see the stressors that are there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, stress in the sense of, you know, personal stress and also environmental stress as well, smog and, and yeah. uh, pollution and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the things I appreciate up here as well is the clean air. Oh, Relatively yeah. clean air. Oh, I, I love mean, it. I come, it's very clean. I come from Hamilton, so Hamilton is not as uh, clean as, as, as up here. So. Well, we, we moved here from Don Mills. Yeah. And when we got out of the car, uh, we, we had to go to Kelso Beach to wait nice. before the open house was open. And then we just like the air. <laughs> when did you guys move? Uh, in 2015. Yeah. And uh, when you say we, you're, I'm guessing it's you're talking me about and my wife. And, your wife yeah. and, and I also have two kids. Oh, yeah, two kids. How old are they? So three and six. So so one of them was born well we, after we moved. Because my wife wanted to have a second kid, but our apartment was too small. Yeah, yeah. And so we are like, well, we can get a house and no one's out. <laughs> <laughs> three and six. My son just turned three as well. Yeah, my daughter's six months. <laughs> oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I moved out here about a year and a half ago. I moved uh, uh, 2018, April 2018. Okay. I work for the county myself. So, oh, okay, uh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I love it up here, man. What do you do with the county? Social services. Oh, okay. Very nice. <laughs> is, is he, did he call attention? I, I think it was by mistake or I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so did, did, did we want to... Well, is there anything else we wanted to address? I think, I think we're just talking about. Uh, um, I don't know if he asked us to address any specific question. I think yeah. this was just a, a meet and greet type of thing, and it's good that you know you came up with that. Like, oh, I, I'm going to meet him before I leave today. Oh, okay. And then I was like, ah, this is the perfect time, right? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that was so my feeling as well. Uh, does your wife work here as well, or uh, she she homeschools? Homeschools. Yes. Your, your children. Yes. <laughs> This, this is a, a, a 360 camera, so, so that later uh, we can post it uh, on YouTube and then everyone can see what this is like. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> 
Yeah. Is, that, is that foil on top of it? Yes, that's the heat sink because I was having problems where it would shut off because it was overheating. Oh, God. So this, this is my experiment that's ho hopefully working. <laughs> if only I was that technical. Yeah. <laughs> my toaster breaks down and I gotta call someone. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so we're talking about feelings. What, what are we talking about? Um, How do you feel about relationships among the major faiths? It's a, it's a tricky question because uh, I was saying to Liz, I grew up in the Catholic Church, but that's not where I'm at now. But and it was like we had the answer, and everybody else didn't. And then, and then I went to another church that had the answer, <laughs> yeah. but nobody else did. Yeah. And I think that people are becoming much more open. But sometimes it's easier to be open to people of no faith yeah. Yeah. <laughs> than it is to because we feel strongly about our own beliefs and are sometimes kind of thinking, well. If this is right, then, you know, so yeah. it, it's a, a difficult question, this one. Is. Um, for me, it's, it's rather simple, uh, but I take it a different way. Um, the only thing that I feel lately is the fact that with different faiths, my mother-in-law is Catholic, right? so, so I'm Muslim myself. Um, I feel that as a community, we should be appreciating the commonalities. Uh, we should be focusing on the commonalities and what brings us together and, you know, what each, each religion talks about instead of, you know, honing down on those differences and, and you know, making those differences divided. I firmly believe, this is my personal belief, that no religion on this earth teaches bad. Every single religion teaches you to be good. Um, and I think as, as human beings, as we progress towards a you know, world with different faiths and different views and whatnot, um, it's important in times such as these to focus on, on what brings us together and, you know, the, the goodness at the end of, you know, each religion or each different faith group that each person is going to. It's my personal mm. Yeah, I, I completely agree with what you're saying is that, like, all of, all of the faiths that I'm aware of all have... Uh, they're, they're, they're similar in, in the sense that they, they cover the same aspects, you know, that they all have their own understanding of, of God, you know, and um, that mercy and compassion or forgiveness and compassion and love are, are, are essential and important. And um, that you know, almost all of them also have uh, kind of the prophecies of the Age of Peace, you know, <laughs> and so... So it's all extremely similar. It's just, it's kind of like it's the same religion that just came out through different voices all around the world. You know? We haven't, haven't been very good at working together. Like, I find that, you know, like, there are two ministerials in all the There's the evangelical and the mainline. What is that? <laughs> you know, uh, and so, and then there's the Muslim community. And we don't often get together as communities of faith, yeah. you know, yeah. and you're right, yeah. and that's that's there is one God, and yes. uh, we, we tend to focus on our differences instead of our faith. Yeah. Well, that's sad, I mean, when I read this, if I say, just my feeling, how do you feel about your relationships, about the relationship you have made, I, I feel sad, mm -hmm. I feel sad, um, uh, I was just telling Nikki in the in my other little conversation, um, I'm a pastor, but my my childhood I'm a missionary child. I was brought up in India and in Nepal. I was brought up my early years were infused with multiple different nationalities. I lived uh, communally with Czechs, with Swedish, with Americans, with and um, and so uh, my experience of God, whatever, I didn't know that it was Christianity. I just knew that it was kind of like an adventure mm -hmm. and that people were doing things, you know. Um, you know my father was taking, um, smuggling Bibles into China over the Himalayas. So mm -hmm. that was my understanding of faith. And so then... I am sad when even like 
because they were in the question phase with two different ministerials and we kind of want to defend, defend, defend what we think we stand for and stuff. So I, I would love to see um, us working together on more people and, and, yeah, focus on the good. What can we come together? Because in the end... Really, those are the core things of every faith. Yeah, and of humanity as well. That's yeah, right. yeah. E- even even the non-faith, like uh, a lot of the atheists, they have um, transhumanism and the singularity, which is kind of their version of the age of peace, and that you know when the robots take over, everything is going to be okay. I, I think yeah. that's that's the gist of it. But yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> Another thing I want to share is um, there's four of us come from Charlie Church. When we saw heard about this, it was like we were meant to have a leaders meeting tonight. It was like, we've got to change this. We have got to come to this because we, I was just talking to one of my guys just in the week of, you know, almost like, how can we meet other faiths mm-hmm. here? Mm-hmm. You know, and we were talking about, you know, could we just not eat together? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Great brand. Yeah. You know, could we not yeah. just do that. And I mean, part of what I wanted to do for, you know, as our community, our church, was to kind of just invite other faiths. Absolutely. And let's honest, you know, whether it's a Sunday or Saturday or whenever you would normally have a faith gathering, yeah. that we would just come together and eat. Yeah. And that our, and that our communities yeah. would have something like this, yeah. that you would, you know, put food to yeah. eat. And, yeah. and then when Green, when this came up, it was like, oh, I was excited. It was like, oh, my life. Mm-hmm. It was like, we've been talking about, you know, maybe we could just invite this. Yeah. This is what we were talking about. How do we get, you know, mm-hmm. I'm so glad that you yeah. yeah, because I would love, as a pastor, yeah. one of the leaders, to be, I've got the... Um, the oomph to be able to make that happen. Well, on we got our we side. gotta make that we gotta make that happen. I'll tell you my personal uh, reason of being here tonight and, and why I'm involved is yeah. after our mosque got vandalized in yes. our town. Um, we went looking for answers as a community, right? Uh, two consecutive nights of vandalism. We looked for answers on a community level. We tried to reach out to politicians and whatnot, and everyone was very supportive. Um, and at the end of it, we all sat down, and I'm like, well, you know, why is this happening? My personal belief is a lot of this, a lot of hatred and whatnot comes from a place of ignorance, comes from a lack of knowledge, comes from a fear of the unknown. How do we, how do, how do we address that? We address that by opening up our doors. Right? We address that by me being here tonight, interacting with you, coming yes. in from another church, yes. and hopefully us setting up something in the in the near future. No, I right? love it. That's, so that's what it is. And, 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 and individuals like Logan as well, yeah. and even at our mosque as well, we've made sure, you know, open up our doors, and every event that I attend, I tell people, I say, you know what? Come on in. You don't even need to do... You know what? Every Friday we have a gathering. Just come and observe. We have coffee there. You know, we'll set up some tidbits, whatever. If you want to come observe, you know, by all means, we'd be more than more than happy. So I feel that's how you... And me, myself, I go to all the churches. I go to the Alliance Church, the United Church. In it, it, a bit to kind of break down those barriers. And, and especially yeah. with my friends at the synagogue as well. Mm-hmm. Same thing, right? They've been through a lot over the years as well. So I think it's about time that we all band together, break down those barriers. Um, I personally believe, and I'm an optimist, that uh, uh, in a community such as yours, we're unique, uh, such as ours, we're uniquely positioned because we're not a huge, huge community. Mm-hmm. Um, if we really do this right, uh, we can serve as a role model uh, for other for communities sure. around us. So yeah. that's my take on it. And I think there's, uh, at the end of all this, there lies an opportunity here as well. So anytime, anytime you want to come in, uh, you're more than welcome, and I'll be sure to you know set something up with, uh, with your church in Shaw Lake as well. Yes, we have a big. I'm saying we're the big church on Highway yes, Six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not a big church in at all. Yes. We got the uh, building, um, but yeah, to 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 gather with individually the churches or couple and you know be in each other's space, you, you know, and and I just what I saw was to eat together. You know, bring potluck, mm-hmm. and so that you teach the faith dreams you knew. So it was like, you know, for us we meet on a Sunday, but I don't know what day you meet Friday's on Friday. Yeah. So, so if we were to do like an, a, a Friday night gathering, 
yeah. at your faith yeah. community. Yeah. And then another couple of months later, a Sunday night, a Sunday yours, morning yeah. gathering in yeah. hours. Yeah. But, but I think for me, the level of food, everything, I see food. <laughs> Yeah, I like how you think. As you can tell, uh, um, I love my food as well. I, I'm big on water. Down, <laughs> like high quality water. It breaks down, doesn't it? It breaks down barriers. Of course it does. Yeah. And you know, with the intention, uh, to for me, it has to be very intentional that we are coming. Not just that one group here, one group there. Both of our, our communities know we are coming to meet. Yeah. We're yeah. coming to interact. We're yeah. coming to break bread. Yeah. We're coming to drink together or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, totally, we will go for it. No, we gotta, we gotta set something up. Yeah. And I will, yeah. 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 So my husband always helps the lead pastors there, so well, that's kind of a, a weird duo anyway. Nice. Um, but um, it's a nice idea to have more than two. Yes. Uh, because if there's only your church and your church, then it's kind of like, but if there's, I, I like this because it's all different people of, yes. of faith as opposed to, so so you don't have that feeling of the us and them. It's, it's all, it's us yes. as, yes. as opposed to. So. But for me, I think there is a place, I absolutely agree with that. You know, yes. the feeling of here, it's yes. a wonderful start. But I think to model something, to uh, to just eat together, you know, what, what I was thinking of, and ask another church <laughs> or another faith community to get to know them. Have too many, I know too many First experience. United has been working with the um, Ojibwe uh, yeah. people a lot. Yeah. And I even went to their thing a few Sundays ago uh, where they were... It was some kind of big event. The mayor was there, um, and some other important people, and they had uh, all the things on display that they had made in the Kelso. Um, and they also had a big kind of food uh, thing afterwards. We kind of chatted together. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so it, it does seem. I, I know, like my personal kind of goal is to visit all the churches in the own sound area. Um, it's just um, so like not all of my Sundays are free, <laughs> but and whenever I have a chance, churches. yeah, there are a lot of churches. <laughs> there are. So, then there's the outlining ones like ours. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I am very interested. I don't think there's any other evangelical church. Oh, is, is it an evangelical yeah, church so thing? Well, we we come under the banner of evangelical. I don't. Okay. We, we're a mishmash. Because I I try I've tried I've been at a. Later Day Saints, uh, yes. Baptists, yes. Uh, United Church, yes. and Anglican Church. Okay, then we, yeah, we give you the evangelical kind of flavor. Yeah. Oh, okay. We have the Rockley for the Alliance. Oh, okay. They're probably way more evangelical than yeah. that. Way, way more. So oh, okay. I just say to Nikki, one of our big experiences of traveling, you know, is that we as a community have been on a uh, three-year journey to try and become a place where we could be welcoming and affirming to LGBT people. Mm-hmm. Very specific because most, yeah, most of the evangelical churches, isn't it? You know, there is a total them us. It has been very, very costly for us mm. and very uh, painful. Oh, okay. So, well, so I, I that know that puts us out on the outskirts anyway. I know what well, 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 one of the things I like to uh, tell. Uh, when I go go to churches, is is about following the image of, of uh, Jesus Christ and how He had forgiveness and compassion for all beings, and so obviously that includes uh, LGBTQ people. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, but but yeah, that that sounds sounds. I, I'm I'm pretty excited. I uh, to go to an evangelical type of church because I've never been to one of those before. Yeah, um, very, uh, I don't know if there's a directory of all the churches in Owen Sound or anything like that. That would make my task so much easier. <laughs> that I could just kind of. Best directory is Google. I, I know, it, it's just. just it, it produces like this huge list, and then I'm not sure if that's all current or. But I, I guess I could I could work with that. Yeah. yeah. You're an IT guy. You yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> I, could, I could sort it out and figure <laughs> out. Well, evangelical ones are like Calvary, Rockford, Alliance, sometimes evangelical, 
Alliance. Okay. Yeah. Now friends in Alliance. Okay. No, no, actually, I said I grew up in a Catholic church. I married an evangelical. I went to the Alliance Church actually for most of it. Nice. Uh, and now I'm in the Anglican Church. Now you're in the Anglican Church. Yeah. yeah. But you're based in Owen Sound? I am in Owen Sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Wow. Um, I've been very uh, humbled to see our own. I came to town about a year and a half ago when uh, uh, I worked for the county. The county hired me out of school in uh, Hamilton. Um, and even, even over the year and a half, I've seen our, our community grow, and it just makes me so happy and humble, right? Uh, despite, you know, whatever happened and whatnot, we feel so welcome. And the other day, um, not this Friday, the Friday before that, in our congregation, we had over 100 members. Uh, and that for me 